hello so here's my presentation on the Laban efforts let's get to know Rudolf von Laban first who was Rudolf von Laban what inspired him who taught him you know just a basic overview so he was many things he did choreography dance theory um, he even dabbled in architect and um, he basically was a visionary in the dance world. He was born in Austria-Hungary and he was born into a military family. His father was a highly ranking figure in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, so Laban was educated in both the Western and Eastern cultures as well as the military background. But he chose to reject the military career and choose to be, do art instead. Um, he looked at architecture and observed the moving body and space. And he also was in um, poor mental health most of his life. He had spasmodic manic depression, which is um, usually after very creative episodes. Um, it, as well as like when his ideas would be turned away um so he would suffer with that mental health problems he also did not have a lot of richness to his name um he didn't have a lot of possessions or a home to go back to he was married twice and had a total of nine children um but he did not really be much of a family man after his career was in full swing. He, in essence, danced between the two world wars. Um, and also another influ influ influential background is his uncle, who was a actor in Germany, and then another uncle who was a architect in Bratislavania. Um, and just to clarify, contrary to public belief, that is not Rudolf Laban, just making sure. Um, that, however, is an example of Laban. So, Laban developed a lot of different things. He had a lot of different motivations and accomplished so many different things. So, he was one of the founders of the European Modern Dance, um, which was propagated by his followers, such as the people who I'll reference later. Um, he raised the status of dance as an art form and especially as a scholarly work. He studied the theory of dance, the practice of dance, and his movements transformed the nature of dance, um, dance scholarship specifically. He was one of the first establishers of choreography and dance analysis, as well as dance notation known as Laban Le notation, which we'll explain further later on. He was the first person also to work on community dance and he also reformed the prior dance education, um, especially with the high notion that dance should be made available to everyone, not just specific groups. Um, the Art of Movement Studio was renamed the Laban Center for Movement and Dance. Uh, as you can tell, there's a lot of different things that are influenced by him or started by him and his predecessors. And even today, his work lives on because people are unaware even of how influenced they are by his vision, his creative boldness that he, we'll get into a little bit long, a little bit more later on. So simple little overview of his life, uh, where he lived, where he worked on his theory, um, when he did this. So he was born in Austria-Hungary in 1879. Um, in 1938, he went to Germany. Uh, well, actually, my bad. He fled from Germany to the UK, where he joined his dance collaborators, Kurt Joss and Lisa Ullman. Um, in 1946, the Laban Center for Movement and Dance started out. It was first called the Art and Movement Studio, as I said. That's in Manchester. Rudolf Laban and Lisa Ullman started that. In 1953, the Art and Movement Studio expands and moves to Adelson in Surrey. 
and in 1958, Rudolf Laban dies. So let's break that down a little bit more. So when he was 30, he went to Munich, Munich, Germany, which is the art center in Germany. He revolutionized the movement arts and he spent his summer at the art school in Monte Verita. In 1919, he started his like most prominent part of his career. Well, not, well, he, his career basically took off where he ran a de dance theater company, uh, a chamber dance company, um, and he started a main school, which was a movement choir, especially for amateurs. He wrote a lot of articles, books, he performed, he created dance um, productions. Then in the next couple years, he actually had a total of 25 Laban schools and choirs that were started. Um, they educated ch children, amateurs, men. So this is a lot of different pioneer work that he's doing here. Um, they also have a lot of pro professional dancers that come out of this. And while Laban did this, he also was very important to have, he also held it very important to him to have a movement laboratory where he did his own research. Um, in 1927, he went to Berlin where he started another institute. And by the time he's 50, you can tell that he's at the height of a very influential career. Um, and he was getting a lot of recognition in the dance and movement like areas. Um, when he was 60, him and Lisa Ullman worked in the industry. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit more later, but he introduced basically his background to the work study and he created methods to increase production. Um, and then in 1953, he went to Adelstone and worked when he was older, like in his last couple of years, he um, studied movement as behavior, especially like industrial behavior, um, the workers in the industrial center and um, even psychiatric patients. Um, so yeah, that definitely laid groundwork for dance therapy and professions and movements. Um, and then in his late 70s, he died. Okay. So how did... Laban, like, why did it become what it did become? Why did Laban become Laban? Uh, why did it catch on and how, why was it so influential? So, Laban was influenced by the social and cultural changes of the time and the context that he was in. He saw the traditional constraints against showing feeling and he questioned this and it was opening Basically, like people were questioning these constraints as well and wanting to free up the body. Um, so he, Laban witnessed the response to cultural changes by like visual artists such as Picasso and Matisse and others. And he wanted to mirror and advocate this freedom and dance and movement art. Um, Freud had argued for the psych and this had opened up a previously closed door where they didn't talk about like the body and openness or sexuality where this is now being talked about and he wanted to use the movement arts as a medium to express this new freedom both by men and women um especially dancing like without shoes or without a ton of clothes on so that was definitely pioneering in that aspect he um abandoned like traditional steps, the traditional reliance on music, um, structural dance, like a miming type of dan dance to want to find a new freedom and rhythm, creating new steps and using like space a lot more. Um, even in his example of a dance farm that he set up in Switzerland in 1913, they grew their own vegetables and wove their own cloth and danced around <coughs> on the hillside, which was 
it, one of the first people to do something like this, where later on, there was more people who did stuff like this, such as Ted Sean, who had a retreat for male dancers called Jacob's Pillow. Um, let's see. So, by 1923, Laban had a large following of students, and all these students helped establish his dance schools all over Europe and get him a lot of recognition. He even was invited to choreograph the opening of the 1936 Olympics, which was in Berlin. Um, but when he had, he had a thousand people that were going to dance in this, and they had basically got into the dress rehearsal where then the Nazi government ch decided that it was too focused on the individual freedoms and not the state and canceled it. So yeah, that's interesting because yeah, yeah, he basically worked for the Nazis for a short time until the Nazis decided they didn't like him. But that's on another, another topic. So he also had influence in the industrial world where he applied his movement analysis to assembly lines where for example women were be now being trained to do men's jobs traditional men's jobs in world war ii um he tried to increase productivity he saw that there was problems with like being tired and cramps and being bored so he created like exercises for the workers to do and that like helped their joints and help their technique so they wouldn't be in pain um let's see so yeah there was a lot of very divided reactions to this the, the public either really loved the rule-breaking defiance of like a now free and strengthened dancing or they were super angry about the defiance of tradition um so they were either super pro Lebon or super anti Lebon. Basically, dance could never be looked at the same way again. So he basically did everything he did through um, lots of research and leading others and his different theories. He saw the body as an instrument of expression. He had a lot of apprentices and followers, such as Mary Wigman, which was his first one, and Marianne North, which was his, one of his last ones. He had a lot of articles and books and writings. He had the dance choirs of new dancers such as the men. Um, they also, he also had like mass dance culture. Um, so that's another thing that's kind of new. They have like celebra celebratory dance and getting people to par participate um, and being like socially aware. He also had um like social themes that he wove into his work um such as other like drama people such as brecht and visual artists such as melvich um so he basically wove in like his social themes into his work um and then him and kurt joss basically made dance like a social force by and also in including political anti-war ballets and anti-poverty ballets. And a huge part of what he did is by observing people, such as just like going to classes and rehearsals and theaters and factories and clinics. Basically, he went to every venue he could think of to observe people and learn from them. So... What was Lebon's goals and how did he accomplish them? So I really like this quote. I thought it pretty much summed it up really well. It's by the Trinity Lebon Conservatory of Music and Dance. Rudolf Lebon's passion was to establish dance as an equal of an art of equal standing to its sister arts, a place it had never held. It had to establish a medium through its own literacy, hence in its burning desire to find a notation for dance. Without literacy, dance would never be taken seriously by the cultural elite. So that's basically why Laban did what he did. And also because of the distinction he saw be between functional movement and expressive movement. I don't know if that cut out some of the presentation before, but... Um, 
So, let's see. He wanted to distinguish between movements that serve like everyday life purpose and were functional and expressive movements that communicated ideas and artistic expression. Um, just cutting away from everyday boring life and expressing actual feeling. Um, so some of the ways he did this was by um, his notebook of anatomical sketches where he studied human muscle and bone structure and did a lot of figure drawings. He also did geometrical form drawings and then would combine the geometric forms and the human figures. As you can see throughout this presentation, there's a lot of examples of that. I'm not sure if they're being cut out, but hopefully they're all there. Um, let's see. So yeah, he spent 20 years understanding movement and wanted to create signs of, on the body that could represent like movement through space and time, um, which would become Le Bon notation. So yeah, and that's adopted and changed over time to fit the modern needs of the, of the world. So there's some more examples of that as well. Um, so his two most known accomplishments of Le Bon is the notation system first of um, Le Bon notation, which um, works with different genres of dance to be recorded and written down. Um, basically understanding human movement and being able to, yeah, Put in written form um either to like document it or to study it and experiment with it so that's why laban literally like nowadays if you say laban it means movement analysis let's see so oh another huge thing was that he searched for like basic vocabulary to express like to use for expressive movement um, I mean, it still does apply to, like, the everyday movement, but specifically for, like, emotions and stuff like that. Um, and he had his basic factors, um, flow, weight, time, space. Um, and we'll dive into that a little bit more. And that is basically known, like, that became movement education. Like, his, like, documenting the different, um like vocabulary is how people educate people about movement. Um, and like I mentioned before, the movement choirs, which is like a large group of people um, coming together to perform a choreography, but with like personal freedom to express things. You even see that today in the example of like flash mobs. So, Let's talk about the student process. Like, what did it look like to be a student of Le Bon? And how do we even study him today? So, basically, student actors find it hard to act in a way that's outside of their own body, which means that every character they play is going to move like the student does. Um, so, Le Bon introduces a new way of thinking about the characters um so they have a new vocabulary are they flicking are they weighted are they a free character or are they drawn down to the ground so there's different ways to um use these efforts and let's talk about that a little bit more so first observational work um they can observe individuals in the world and think about identifying the eight efforts and how they move and behave and then try to um, duplicate that in when they create their characters and take elements of that. In text work, they can look for speech patterns. They can um, see because that our language represents like what we're thinking inside. So by looking at how the character expresses themselves, they can like try to look for how which one of the eight efforts they can use. 
And then emotional work, they can look at the personality of their different characters and their emotional actions and try to combine that with the efforts and experiment with that, um, including like the personality of the character, whether they're like happy, they'd be floating, or if they're angry, they'd be like punching. Um, and then lastly, how they dress with costuming. Um, so what kind of like, costume do they wear you know that also is a clue to how to express their character um so the eight different Laban efforts specifically there's a lot of different synonyms because of how widespread the usage is but I like this layout it's not completely thorough but just a quick little draw up for, for it um time is either sustained quick Space is either direct or indirect, and weight is either light or strong. So then there's gliding, pressing, floating, ringing, dabbing, punching, flicking, slashing. Um, you can see like the more in-depth description there. Um, and that's just one example of the layout for that. So... What Laban is most known for, like we mentioned throughout this, the two main impacts that Laban is known for is Laban movement analysis and Laban notation. I thought this um, quote by Rizzuto was a pretty good summary of what Laban is known for. So Laban movement analysis is a map for clarifying and analyzing movement between within the categories of body, effort, shape, space. Laban notation records movement in symbols, much like sheet music for musicians. It is set up much like musical notation, except that it reads vertically instead of horizontally. Direction levels in each part of the body are represented by shapes and symbols. Each section of the central staff delineates from left to right which part of the body and which side is being addressed. The development of these two systems helped establish dance as a serious art form, earning it more acceptance in scholastic circles. So that is why Laban is known, or like what it's known for. So Laban did a lot of scholarly work. Um, there's a lot of books written by him which explain his own thinking, his exercises, and even his sketchbooks, which I've included throughout this presentation. Um, and then there's a lot of works based on him, which are just, you know, analytical or scholarly based on him. Um, so Laban is, um, so influential that there's a lot of people impacted by him, so much so that if you look it up, it's not going to give you exact names, but I have some exact names of his collaborators and interns, um, as I mentioned a little bit throughout their presentation, Kurt Joss, Mary Wigman, D.H. Lawrence, Pina Bausch, Susanna Link, and M. Grod Barshneef. Um, and then successors. So basically he was so influential that basically everyone today who takes a class or studies dance in any way will probably learn about Laban. And if, even if they don't, they will be using Laban's efforts, whether or not they know it. Even at Regent University class of 2021, we learned about Laban. So all of us are <laughs> um, successors of Laban. So because Laban helped establish dance as a professional and scholarly um, work, you can study these methods undergraduate, postgraduate, basically anywhere that you want to study dance. Um, some places they have a MA in dance studies. They have the BA Hans Dance Leader. There's research degrees. Um, even doctorate degrees, which are validated now. There is postgraduate diploma in community dance. There is a Handman University Medical School in Philadelphia, which had the first MA dance movement therapy. There's the Laban Center. There's postgraduate masters, which include choreography, European dance, theater practice, dance performance, dance science. And then in 2005, Laban um, merged with Trinity College of Music to form the Trinity Laban Conservatory, which I even referenced before. 
oh, the Conservatory of, of Music and Dance. Um, so there's a lot of different places. Um, so biblically, the truth is the truth. Like all good things are God's truth. All good things are from God, as it says in First Chronicles 16. But unfortunately, we live in a fallen world where we would all have fallen short. So even though all good things and all art reflects God's goodness, um, unfortunately, we won't be able to do anything perfectly, especially when we try to cut God out of the picture, because at the end of the day, it's God's world that we live in. So thank you so much for watching this presentation, and here are my sources. Um, have a great day.